Tony, congratulations. Thank you. The traditional opening question for these is uh, why? Why Birmingham? <laughs> well, I was enjoying Christmas at home. Um, I think we, me and the missus we were planning to go to New York actually earlier in the new year and um, this, a, call, a call came and um, I explored it. I, I'd, had a, I'd had one or two calls and I had explored a few avenues and um, this was just so exciting really. Uh, the owner phoned me um, and you, I don't know how many interviews he's done but you can't um, not be impressed with the enthusiasm, the drive that he, he talks about and um, the plans that he's got and where he hopes to take this football club and um, I've been in football a long time and Birmingham City is, is always in my mind a, a big city club, second biggest city in the country and it's it's the, you know the, the heartbeat of it you know I understand there's other clubs in this city um, one or two of them doing a little bit better than this club at the moment of course but um, the opportunity to to get Birmingham City back to the big time and with the huge fan base it's got and the, the plans that the owner's got um, why because of because of that drive and that passion and that emotion that he, he, he portrayed to me and here I am trying to help this club on the journey you must have been disappointed uh, after everything you achieved at Sunderland with the way it ended. Did that conversation reinvigorate you, your enthusiasm? I think, listen, when I'm on the grass, I'm pretty enthusiastic. I, I'm fully aware of my own persona. Some people have said, oh, you're a bit dour, Tony Mowbray, a bit dour. You're getting on a bit, uh, a bit dour. I, I don't think so when I'm in the building, when I'm around, when I'm singing in the morning and on the grass with the lads and, um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm enthusiastic all the time. I love football. I was just talking to the radio people there about 1970 World Cup, Jazzinho, Rivellino. That's my first ever thoughts of football and our first coloured television in 1970. And um, I like attacking football. I like, and probably there's my influence. I like attacking football. I like clever players. I want to have the ball and attack. And um, but. I've been in the game as a manager 20 years and as a player as 20 years I've, I understand that um, it's a process, it's, it's, you have to build it and you have to grow it and, um, and that's why I'm here, hopefully to try and fill the club full of really good players who can dominate the game, um, obviously domination doesn't mean you're going to win, you need people to put the ball in the net, you need defenders to edit out, you need goalkeepers to make saves and um, so to build the club really, I feel as if why I'm here to to help the existing players, to try and bring through some young players, to um, to buy some footballers, and um, somewhere down the line in the not too distant future, to have Birmingham City competing at the top end of this league and trying to get to the Premier League. No, Jazinho's out there quite. No. But from what you've seen in the last few days, is there enough there for you to do what you say and get back to the big time at some point, or do you need to use the January window? I'm not sure it's going to be the January window. I think um, if you understand the makeup of the football club, I think it's more like the summer. I think we have to stabilise the football club. As I say, try and um, work with the existing players. It, I, I've always felt don't go into a football club and change something without you really knowing what needs changing. I, I like to give good human beings an opportunity. So I talk to everybody, every player, every member of staff. I weigh them up. I feel whether they're still enthused at this football club and want to be part of the journey moving forward. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a bit longer than, oh, let's bring some players in in January. But I, I do think we will bring one or two players in in January. But it, um, I think really to stabilise the club a little bit and then in the summer, what happens in the summer in, in, in football, you know, in the championship, th there's going to be three teams coming down from the Premier League with lots more money than everybody else and if they can keep their best players, they're going to be really strong. And so what I'd like is, is for us to be able to invest and hopefully put the foundations down by then that we are going to be competitive and um, add some good players ourselves and so that we can compete with those teams who come down with, with lots of money and um, an ambition to bounce straight back. Um, yeah, I think it's really exciting, I'm really looking forward to it and um, the current players, amazing enthusiasm on the training ground considering what they've been through, you know, they've had I'm the third manager in a very short period of time for them. Um, 
they work really hard, they listen, you know when a, a group of 25 footballers is looking at you when they're all in a huddle and you were talking, their eyes were all glued and their heads were nodding like yours is now, regarding they understand, they want to, they want to be part of it. Um, and I'm hoping I can make an imprint on them pretty quickly um, and then just start growing what I do really, put the habits into them. I'm a strong believer in the repetition of good habits it develops the um, the foundations of what you want to do and so you know we have to work on being better with the ball we have to retain the the great organization out of possession we have to wrap it all in real hard work we we are playing for a club that is supported by hard working industrial people and they want to see their team fight and, and win games in lots of different ways and and i hope somewhere down the line we'll win games through through dominating the ball, creating all the chances, being the best team and, and, and winning. But um, the journey to get to that has got to start with organisation, hard work, um, competitive edge, and that's what we'll aim to bring. You say you, 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 when you arrive at a club, you speak to as many people as possible. D does that include former managers? I mean, have you spoken to Wayne? I know Ashley's still here, so mm. he's a bit of a conduit. No. I haven't had conversation with Wayne, no. Um, Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Wayne will be hurting at the moment, I think, you know, it's to lose your job, I, I, I've, you know, I've been in this 20 years, I've lost my job, it's um, when you sacrifice so much, you move away from home, you, you move into an apartment, you don't see your children, you don't see your wife for, sometimes for weeks on end, you put a big sacrifice in and, um, and then when it's taken away from you, despite all that hard work, it, it's really tough. And I've felt that and know what it's like. I think Wayne will probably need some time to, to put that clear all in his mind. And, um, and for me, my job at this moment is to work with this group of players, to, to reassure them, to, to tell them what's required, the way I want to do it. And, um, and I feel as if they're listening at the moment. You know, of course, the examination of any football team is on the pitch on a Saturday afternoon or a Tuesday night and them games are coming pretty fast for us and we'll have to see how we're going to do. Um, it's an interesting challenge, Swansea. Swansea are obviously got a new coach themselves. Uh, Luke Williams, somebody I know pretty well, he's very in the mould of Swansea City, pass, pass, pass. He's a very talented young coach. and. Um, but we're looking forward to the opportunity and hopefully we can get three points on Saturday to give everybody a smile on the face and start moving forward. You've obviously spoken to Tom Wagner. Have you yeah. spoken to the other Tom, Tom Brady? No, no. I'm looking forward to it. Obviously a huge personality in the world of sport, American sport particularly, of course. But um, I know his involvement. Um, <coughs> I'm sure they'll be over soon and on the training pitch and uh, we'll be having a cup of tea and chatting about what we think's right and what we think uh, direction we want to go. So, yeah, at this moment my whole focus for three days has been on trying to figure out along with the existing coaching staff what, what, what's the best way to go, what's the team, what do you think, you know, there's, there's some options in different positions, what's the best option for this game and, um, and then just trying to get the key points of the things that I like teams to do, how I want them to do it, and they're listening and they're picking it up, and hopefully we'll we'll see the identity that I'm trying to give them. But it won't be the finished article. I'm not sure we're going to have sixty odd percent possession, for instance. You know, I'm not sure that's part of the makeup of this group of players at the moment. But um, hopefully you'll see hard work, endeavour, uh, desire. And, um, and wrap that all up and get the fans behind us, that would give us a real chance to win a game of football. It's been suggested that, that one of the problems at Sunderland was you weren't being listened to, you weren't involved enough in recruitment. What, what, what discussions have you had about your involvement in recruitment at Birmingham? All very positive. Um, you know, talking to talking to, to Craig, of course, who's, who's a sporting director, and Gary Gary Cook, obviously, is around the building as well, and very supportive. And um, yeah, I'll be sitting in all of those meetings, and I I'm not saying I'm going to sit here and say, oh, not him. We, but I think huge impact. I think on the recruitment. If I have an identity of how we want to try and build the team and what type of players allow you to do that, I think it's really important that the manager has a big say on the recruitment but I fully understand we live in a world of football that does have sporting directors and executives and, and, and clubs like identity 
I'd like to think it's, a, it's aligned up with my identity, how ultimately how Birmingham City would like to play. And so I don't think there's going to be much um, friction between who we sign, what we do, we'll, it, but it'll be very much a collective and I'll be very much part of that. You've spoken about your, your ambitions you know, long term. Yeah. You've got Sunderland to the playoffs. Can you get Birmingham this season into the playoffs? Oh, I think you're asking a big, um, a big question there. I don't want it to be a leading question. What, I, what I've said to the players is, if we can find a way to win three or four games back to back, this league is really, really tight. You know, it's uh, so we, even even with Sunderland, we could lose a game and drop to twelfth, win win the next one and draw one and be back sixth. It's uh, this stage of the season. It is still so very, very tight. You know, in the middle block of the league, anywhere from fourth down to. I don't know, 18th, 19th, you know, you win four games on the bounce, three games on the bounce. Can we do it? Have they done it yet? No, they've won two on the bounce and jumped to sixth, I think. It, um, it's the season's, you know, half a season almost to go. I wouldn't rule anything out, really, you know. Of, of course, we're in a pretty precarious position. The games look pretty tough on paper, but as I always say to the teams, don't look at the fixtures, look at the next game. Forget about the names on the back of the shirt or, or the colour of the shirt. It's 11 v 11, go and, go and take them on man for man and uh, believe in your talent and have confidence in each other and, and, and you can win any football match. The last question from me, because you've been very patient, everyone's waiting for the okay. as well. Um, talking about recruitment and, and, and you having a say and potentially players coming in, what about keeping hold of your best young players and particularly Jordan James mm -hmm. being linked away yeah. to Italy? I think my views on that would be you I think the ideal scenario is to is to keep all your best players you know it's um if we if we're talking about ambition and building the club we you know it, it sort of goes against it a little bit to think that you're going to sell your best players but um or, uh, your best young players because you know again it's um I don't know much about the young man other than you know I've seen him in training he looks pretty powerful I I I watched on on a on a link I watched the game uh, against Hull City and he had one or two really positive drives with the ball. Um, you know, my hope would be that we keep in our best young players because we're trying to build a football club. Um, and as I've said, you have to fill the football club full of talent. And um, and if he's already here, then, then let's keep him. Um, what I would also add to that, of course, is that every player has prices, every player um, has an opportunity to demand that they want to leave. Every player has an opportunity to to ask questions. And sometimes in the history of my managerial career, I've sold players to improve the team. So if you sell a player and you get X amount of pounds and you can buy four players with that much of money, your team is getting better, your club is getting better. You've got a player who doesn't want to be here who's gone, but he's actually improved the team. So. I'm open in all scenarios. I don't sit here and think we've got to keep this kid because if he knocks on my door and says he wants to go, as long as it's right for the football club and, and the recruitment's ready and we get X amount of pounds and that X amount of pounds equates to these three really talented players, why wouldn't you improve your football club? So everything's open, I would suggest, but at um, this moment, my first message to anybody would be let's keep our best players because we need to try and build the club. Thank you very much. Tony, nice to see you. Hello. Um, you talked about the fans a little earlier, and mm. you've got this immediate <coughs> chance to make a big impact with two home games in four days. <coughs> what are you hoping that they're going to take away from that? Um, that they watch a team that's um, that's fully committed, that's working really hard. I, I'm talking of basics here. You have to be committed. You have to fight for the for the people who pay their money and come and watch their team and expect to see a team that they can be proud of. What I've said, I, I haven't got a magic wand. I can't just f flick my magic wand and this team turn into a into a uh, an amazing passing, moving football team in, in three or four days. I think we have to get the basics in place. We have to give them the confidence and the belief that we are going to play a certain way to work with it and to um, I have certain like pillars of, of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable really in the way I try and set my teams up. I want to play open attractive football with the ball, I want to try and dominate, but if you look at a team in training and you, you watch the strengths and the weaknesses of it, you have to taper how you think the game is going to go. And so 
if your front players aren't as technical as you might want and they lose the ball on a regular basis and you leave yourself vulnerable for transition counter-attack, you have to be careful about how many men you commit in front of the ball and how many men you keep behind the ball. And so I, early on in my tenure here, we will try and play a game that suits the group of players we've got and try and win football matches through endeavour, hard work and hopefully the, the flashes of quality that, that are out there on the pitch. We do have footballers who can create and do some pretty amazing things watching training in the first few days. So um, hopefully we have a good couple of days and win a couple of football matches. But whilst we're doing that, we have to keep trying to put the foundations down and. Um, and hopefully through this month we bring one or two players in that will help the other areas that we need to improve on. And um, so it's a dual aspect thing, try and win football matches and look and search for continual improvement. You know, it's, um, it's if you're trying to build an identity and, and get towards it, you have to work towards it. And it's, you can't just, I, I use the analogy there of a magic wand. It, it, it's, a, it's a continual improvement every day you have to work on the basics, you have to create good habits in a football team. So, so when player A passes to player B, player B gets turned on his first touch and looks forward and passes to player C, who's in a little pocket of space up the pitch 15 yards, who turns and sticks it out to the winger who crosses it. And you've, So you have to create good habits in the team really and, and it takes time to, as I said to you earlier on, um, good practice good habits every day and they materialise on the field on match days and so that's what we'll try and do and in the meantime we'll try and find a way to win. Finally for me, what did you have to promise your wife to make up for the trip to New York? <laughs> oh God. Um, uh, listen, I, I'd have to say there's a, there's a, there's a long story behind, behind that but uh, I... I um, my wife is an amazing human being who, who is, understands, she doesn't want me to leave. She's got three teenage boys and that's hard work. You know, I found nobody teaches you how to be a dad. Eh? And how many of you are dads? Nobody teaches you how to be a dad and that's the biggest challenge for me. Of How do you deal with a young guy who shows some dissent to his mother in the kitchen one day? You know, my dad would have took his belt off and threatened the strapping really, you know, but that was 50 years ago. I'm not sure what you do with young guys, so... Um, I try to have a set of values that I take through my football clubs, take through my family life. Um, my wife's got a tough job while I'm away, but um, she's an amazing woman, so uh, she'll get by and, uh, and we'll stay strong together with the kids. Why is the ball foot taller than me, so? <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Hi, Tony. Hello. Hi, Dan. What is it about the, uh, the West Midlands? You see, been here, been here a couple of times already. You must like it. I do like it. I like the people. I like the journalists who ask the questions. Um, um, listen, I, I just like traditional good football clubs, really. I remember going to Coventry saying, oh, listen, I sat to 87 and watched that cup fire. I watched that Keith Outing dive and Edda. You know, I love football. And to think I could go there and manage the team that, that I watched that day on the telly as a kid. Because in my house, the curtains were drawn. Mum would have a, as big as this table, she'd have all the pork pies and the sandwiches and the gammon and everything all laid out. My dad would bring all his mates from the workingmen's club round. And, and I'd be sitting there with all these blokes watching this match with the curtains in the dark. And it was like war and all the beer was flowing. And, and um, so my life and my thoughts of, of FA Cup, so that 87 Cup final um, for Coventry City, of course. But if, we, if we're talking about Birmingham City, my, my memories of Birmingham City are, are really Trevor Francis memories, I, I think, and um, a, a opposition manager against them for a lot of years. It's just a big club. I'm delighted to be here. Until you get in and you feel the inner workings of any football club, you don't know. Things like, I'm looking behind you now, look look at the buffet they've put on for yous. It's unbelievable, isn't it? The, the food at this club is unbelievable. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I, I thought my previous club did amazing things in the kitchen, but wow. This is, you are all very lucky. This is A1, top Premier League, Champions League food, I suggest to you, and um, you're very fortunate. It only lasted for one press conference. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, talking about that, that press conference was 
a much grander affair at St Andrews and uh, I'm with, with many more people here and I'm sure you can understand yeah, what yeah. it is. But yeah, in yeah. part, did you want this to be a lower key affair? I said, phew, it, it, I, I don't know whether I should say this, it's like water off a duck's back to me. I, listen, you, some, I've been at clubs where there's only ever two people come to press conference every year and they just say, we become mates and they ask me some questions. And then I've been at press conferences like Glasgow Celtic where there's, like you've got today, but there's like six cameras at the back. There's all these people ready to ask you questions. Everything, is, and it's full every single time you go. And I've done them all really. You know what I bring? I try to bring my personality. I try to open up to you. I, I don't want to be guarded. I don't want to play politics with you. I'm just a normal bloke, like yous, I think. And yet yous are probably a lot cleverer than me. You probably went for degrees and you've had to do all the work in a classroom somewhere. I left school at 16 and became a footballer. And for, for however many, 18, 20 years, 21 years if I left school at 16, 21 years I played football. And then for the last 20 years I've managed and I, I didn't do any degrees. I haven't been to any universities. Um, so I just think the best way for me is don't prepare, don't have some notes written down over there. Just go and tell them as it is. And every now and then, the gentleman behind me will go, oh, why did you say that? <laughs> um, and I'll say, listen, that's what I, that's what I do. I, if I've made a bit of a, a faux pas, if that's what they call it, um, it's only honest. It's, it's, it's what I am. You'll either like the honesty and the openness of me, or you'll think, God, he's naive, that guy, isn't he? And ask him anything and he'll just chunter away for 10 minutes but um i believe my footballers react to openness honestness me and him man and man talking about you can't do this why have you done that oh that is amazing son you keep doing that you know just a normal bloke talking to somebody else and uh, and using the 40 years experience that you've got in football and uh, and just this is it this is what i do i don't worry about whether there's 100 people in a press conference or two guys we did. Yeah, but what, what did you look at and what did you think were their problems? I think on the day we played them at the stadium, like they give us some problems. I think they've got some good attacking footballers. I th we, we felt as if on transition they were a bit open and we could get the ball quickly to two tens either side and um, yeah I think we scored from two set players that day um, so it wasn't a, a no we ripped Birmingham to bits I don't think they they, they looked a threat they, they scored a decent goal and um, I know that we've got some all right footballers we, we I think it's I'm stuttering to say it was the organisation of it, but but sometimes if, if you're going to go all out attack, you have to suffer sometimes that the other team are allowed to attack as well. And, and if we took our chances on the day and scored from some set players, then we won the game 3-1. But I, I did feel their threat at breaking away and the, the power and the pace they had at the top end of the pitch. And so, um, yeah, you know, that Sunderland team, you know, the sadness for me leaving Sunderland is, is that left a lot of really, really talented young footballers behind who got huge careers in front of them. And um, yeah, I'm hoping that the more, I've been here three days, so I don't really know the young players yet, but hopefully there's some young players playing for our 21s that are going to be training up here with us on a regular basis and they're going to burst into this team. And, and here's me saying about, ah, oh, there's a few deficiencies. I'm not sure how good we are with the ball at the moment because it's not something that the club have concentrated on for the last however many years it's um but maybe there's some amazing young 18 year olds just bubbling underneath that can come in and be amazing with the ball so once i get my feet under the table and i've watched some 21s games and been down to the other training ground to watch some training myself and um we'll see and maybe this window that we can bring some players in to help and, and definitely in in the summer we'll hopefully get everybody really excited by the recruitment of the players that we bring in. And as I said, there should be no excuses. We should be trying to compete at the top end of the table or the top half of the table. Or, you know, if you're looking at a gradual development, we should be, you know, pushing hard really. And um, that's what we're going to try and do. And just finally, you know the ambitions of this football club now. Do you envisage yourself being a part of that and this being <laughs> the most successful period of your managerial career? Let's hope so. Uh, 
who knows? Who knows? Listen, I, uh, there's lots of stories, not not stories, but historical stories. You know, Gary Cook's here. You know, Manchester City's story. It's a uh, um, yeah. I'd like to be part of it, and if I can keep the enthusiasm, keep showing the owners that I can develop this team, make it wow! Isn't it great to watch Birmingham? Um, who never, who never knows? My, the ambition would be yes, that I could be here at the start of the journey, but a year at the end of the journey. Modern day football, you know, the next Pep Guardiola is just round the corner somewhere. You know, it's um, and every football club is looking for the next one. I think I bring knowledge of football, understanding of human beings, particularly footballers, and. Um, I think I can bring a worth to a football club and that's what I aim to do and work as hard as I I feel I do. Um, I try not to cut any corners, I try and give it the very, very best I've got whilst I'm here and, and the people of Birmingham and the people who come to this football club in their blue and white shirts and their blue scarves, they should know that the manager who stands on the touchline is giving them everything he's got.